Hi everyone, this is Evgeny and I welcome you to the Land Graph Introduction Series. In this lesson we are going to continue to learn about human in the loop concept and specifically we will check what are dynamic uh, breakpoints and how to use them. And quick note, there is a link to Amazon website in the description, so please click on it and then when you buy something somewhere Amazon will reward me and provide a couple of cents, so I will be closer to my dream. A new keyboard. All right, thanks a lot, and now let's jump into the coding session. All right, so as the first step, let's redefine the financial advisor graph or agent, if you like it more, uh, from the third lesson. And this one we are going to use as our guinea pig and do our experimentations. So I'm just, it's nothing new, guys, the same as previously. I'm just redefining it. All right, and just to refresh your memory, what's that? It's a very simple graph, and uh, by the way, the Mermaid server, rendering server is overloaded today, so it took me one minute plus to render this image, so I will be probably cutting this down, the waiting period, so you are not wasting time watching that. Uh, but anyway, the, this is a pretty simple graph, right? We have start, we go to assistant, and this is a financial advisor, so it has some tools how to get data from internet and make a financial advice at the end. And let's try to make it more strict this time, because in general nothing prevents you from asking very stupid questions, which, which are not related to financial area at all. Right, and let's try and create a boundary where we are not allowing to ask questions that are not related to financial advising. And for doing that, uh, we need to introduce another intent check note, it's called here. And this is pretty simple, I will show you. So how it works. This is a note, so this is a Python uh, function again, and it takes the message state as usual. And what we are doing, we have to grab the user message and check if this is the question about financial area, right? So here how it works. We have a prompt and in general, and uh, it says you are a classifier and your task is to determine if user's request is specifically related to finance, investments or financial advisors. And we're providing the user request itself and this one we are taking from the messages, we just grab the latest one and uh, the content of the human message class. And at the end we're asking the LLM, the model, to reply us simple true or false. So what we're doing here, we are making an LLM call, we are invoking with this uh, task, right? And the expected output from the LM would be true or false. So then later we can check if this was true, then this is a financial question. And if not, then, and this is the tricky point, uh, the key point in this lesson, then we are going to raise specific not interrupt exception, uh, providing details like please ask a question related to financial advice. And this one is from Land Graph Years. And if this is a financial question, then we just return in the state back. We are not modifying it at all because it was our side work, right? But we just let it pass it through the whole process. And we need to inject this new node in our graph. And uh, I'm just going to rebuild the graph. And here, uh, the intent check node will be the first one. So we're going from start and check that node, from intent check to assistant, and so on. So let me rebuild this one again and see how it looks like. Oh, this time it was very fast, just 0.3 milliseconds or 0.3 seconds. And this is how it works. We have the first node as intent check and then assistant and it goes to tools and it can cycle through it until it gets all the data and then it generates the response. So let's try and execute the graph. And for doing that I am defining a new thread for our conversation, uh, the initial input is a pretty non-financial uh, one. So what is the weather outside? And I am just triggering the stream in the graph and let's check what's, what's the output. And we can see that it stopped here, right? Uh, it, has, it showed only the human message and then the whole graph stopped for some reasons. But we know why, right? Because this was not a financial question. But anyway, let's check the next note is intent check because here was a dynamic breakpoint. And again, this is the key point here in this lesson. We raised a new note interrupt exception and this works uh, a specific one as, as a breakpoint for the whole graph. 
So uh, the next is still intent check and if I print out the whole state then we can see that okay it was an interrupt and the specific value that we provided back. So please ask a question related to financial advice. So how can we solve this situation? Uh, probably the same way we did in the previous lesson, we have to modify our input, right? So it corresponds to the purpose of this financial agent. And by doing that, we grab in the last message from the queue, and this one is uh, what is the current weather outside. And then we are modifying this message, right? So the key point, we do have a different content, which is a financial now, but at the same time, the idea of the message is the same, right? It's this one and that one. So then we are updating our graph state and providing the updated message. But again, since the idea of the message wasn't changed, the message won't be added to the list of messages, but instead the message will be replaced. So we still have the single message in the queue, right? And uh, just to prove that, let's check the current message queue and we still have the single human message, but this time it says, uh, should I invest in Tesla stocks? All right, now everything looks good, right? We do have the financial question and we can try and resume the graph and see the results, like if it's still stuck here or it will process further, right? And again, uh, what's here? Should I invest in Tesla stocks? And this time it passes through the, our validation node and we do have the assistant which says, okay, this is a tool call required and we do have a tool call. And another, uh, our assistant says, okay, another tool call required and there is another tool call. And uh, finally, we have this, uh, the recommendation from assistant, which is uh, sent back to us and the graph finished it work. So this is how it works. And uh, probably let's check the same example, but not constructing graph here, but instead we will reuse, uh, we will be working via API. And I have the graph already run, up and running in the studio, and it's this one. It's exactly the same one. Its name is uh, Financial Advisor Intent Check. And what I need to do again, I have to copy the URL because we have random port every time. Right, uh, then I'm going to list all the assistants and here the one we are going to work with today, this is financial advisor intent check. And uh, what we are doing, exactly the same, probably you know this already from previous lessons. Uh, we're going to uh, start a new thread. We have our input message, which is how's the weather outside. And uh, we have our assistant as financial advisor intent check. Uh, we are providing the input message as the input for the graph and we are streaming that and just uh, pretty printing the messages. And we see it's the same behavior, right, as previously. We have the single message house, the weather outside, and then the execution stopped. And if we check the current state, like uh, we do the same as previously, but this time we are API, we have, okay, the intent check is still the node which will be run next after resuming and the current state itself in general. Uh, again, it's a lot of metadata, but what's interesting here, we do have this interruption still notifying that, okay, the graph was interrupted. And the reason was that uh, this value we provided back, please ask a question related to financial advice. And let's perform the same thing, like let's update the messages. So we have the last message, we grab it as the last one from the list of messages from our current state. And again, we are modifying the message, but keeping the idea of the message the same. So it's this one and that one. And we are updating the graph state. So this is another API call here. And now we can resume the graph. And again, for doing that, uh, we are saying this is financial advisor intent. We are providing the same thread. So it's clear uh, the conversation, which conversation is that. And by providing input to none, just to refresh your memory, we are resuming the graph from the current state. And let's check how it works. And this time, as expected, we have this message to invest in Tesla stock. And the same, we have a, uh, tool call and the real tool call happens and then another tool call for fetch stock data row and then we have the data from external service that's pretty much here right and at the final state when everything is clear we do have the recommendation from our assistant 
All right, that was it for today. At the moment, you, you know how to make breakpoints in your graph. What else? You know how to ask user to accept your graphs and to resume it. You know how to ask user for providing you additional information. And finally, today, you, you have learned how to do the dynamic breakpoints, where it's not uh, coded in the graph, but on the code level, at the right runtime, you are making a decision if you need to have a breakpoint or not. And this was me, Evgeny. Thanks that you're sticking with me till the end of this video. Uh, well, I will see you next time and in the next series about LineGraph. See you and bye-bye.